Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm happy to say that we've been home for about a month now, starting to get back into our normal routines, and obviously here I am recording the first video in quite some time, so let's hop into it. A couple of weeks ago, after a system update, I needed to pin the version of some packages to try and narrow down an issue I was having, and I thought it'd be a good opportunity to do a quick video about overrides and overlays, and more specifically, how to use the overlays module in Nixconfig, because there are a couple different ways that you can go about it. In brief, overrides are functions used to modify the attribute values of single packages, whereas overlays can apply multiple overrides more broadly across all of Nix packages. For overrides, the two most commonly used override functions are package.override and package.overrideAdders. Override is used to override the arguments passed to a package. For example, consider some package in Nix packages called foo that handles two configuration arguments, arg1 and arg2, and both of those are set to false by default. The override function can be used to modify the values of the two default arguments as follows. In this case, the package version of foo is unchanged, but some options related to foo have been overridden with our own values. Override also accepts a function as an argument, conventionally called prev or previous, providing access to the previous or pre-override values, but I won't detail that here. We'll get into it a little bit later. The override adders function, in contrast, is used to override the package's derivation attributes. If you're unfamiliar with the term derivation, it is basically the set of attributes that define how a package will be constructed, and therefore, this is where we can override the package version. Override adders also accepts up to two functions as arguments, conventionally called prev adders and final adders. Again, I won't go into detail about that here, as we'll be discussing it later on. Continuing with our example, let's say that the package foo is derived from a set of attributes declaring, among other things, that Nix should build foo version 1.2. Using override adders, we can declare that the version should be 1.0, and this override would result in foo version 1.0 being used to construct the package instead of version 1.2. In reality, when pinning a package to a specific version, there are some additional attributes that must be overridden, but I'll delve into that a little bit more later on. For a practical example relevant to pinning the version of Mesa that I was mucking around with, I could have modified the code where Mesa is declared as the graphics package directly in my host config file for Ghost as follows. As of this writing, the version of Mesa included in Unstable is 25.2 and overriding the version attribute here would force Nix to use version 25.1.6 instead. In this case, however, the override only applies to Mesa when it is called in the ghost host config. And at this point, using override adders in the host specific config may actually make the most sense for testing because it limits the effect of the override to this one host. However, let's continue on and see how we can make use of overlays so that the override would apply to any other hosts in the config. Like overrides, overlays can be used to change and extend Nix packages, but the modifications will apply across Nix packages as opposed to the potentially limited context of where the override is applied on its own. According to the overlays section of the Nix packages manual, overlays are Nix functions that accept two arguments conventionally called self and super and return a set of packages. Currently, the standard convention for these arguments is actually final and prev. Prev corresponds to whatever the previous evaluation of Nix packages was that occurred prior to the overlay being evaluated. In other words, prev is the pre-overlay or previous set of Nix packages. Final corresponds to the evaluation of prev being overridden with n number of overlays. In other words, final is the post overlays set of Nix packages. Said another way, declarations made in overlays will override prev, resulting in the final set of packages. To simplify this in a visual manner, consider an example where the package foo has the following set of attributes. We can create an overlay that overrides color 2 with the value green, like so. In this case, Nix packages would be returned with an instance of foo where foo.color2 evaluates as green. The beauty of final being an argument itself is that we can also access it within the overlay. In this example, final foo.color2 and final baz.color2 would both evaluate as green, but final bar.color2 would evaluate as blue, and that's because the value of prev foo.color2 was prior to the overridden value being applied. This can be further complicated by adding more overlays on top of overlays, in which case final always refers to the final Nix packages after all overlays have been applied, but prev will always refer to the previous non-overlaid Nix package. 
There are more in-depth explanations and under the hood descriptions available in the official Next Packages reference manual as well as the official NixOS wiki. Links to the relevant sections are included in the description below. With this high-level understanding of both overrides and overlays, let's look at their implementation in my next config. In the Flake file, we import our overlays module, which declares the default overlays for the entire Flake. This module splits up all of the overlays into organizational categories, declaring each of them in the let block and combining them all in an in block at the end. The first three overlay categories are additions, where we overlay Nix packages with all of our custom packages in Nix config packages common so that they can be accessed the same way in Nix config. Linux modifications is where we would declare any Linux specific overlay values that we would only want to be built if the host was running Linux. And modifications is where we would declare overlays that aren't platform specific. In these examples, you can see both prev and final being used to access the pre overlay and post overlay variations of Nix packages. We'll get to the last two categories in the overlay module later on because they add some additional complexity. For now though, let's look at adding some code to the modifications category that will pin Mesa to a specific version. Here you can see that we're using override adders within the overlay function to modify the version attribute and the source attribute is being overridden with information required to fetch and use the corresponding package. This will effectively pin any reference to packages.mesa with version 25.1.2. Let's go an additional layer deeper though and set this up so that the overlay is only applied when packages.unstable.mesa is used. To do this, we'll look at the stable packages and unstable packages sections. Here we add an additional layer of overlays. First, we overlay Nix packages with stable, which specifically imports Nix packages stable from our flake inputs. Similarly, we overlay Nix packages with unstable, which specifically imports Nix packages unstable from our flake inputs. This means that regardless of what version our inputs.nix packages URL points to in our flake, we'll always be able to access a specific stable Nix packages version through packages in our config. Similarly, we can also always access Nix packages unstable through packages. Consider a scenario where inputs.nixpackages.url, our base version for Nix packages, points to 25.05. Our Nix packages stable also points to 25.05 and inputs Nix packages unstable points to unstable. The overlays allow us to access unstable packages via packages.unstable. And likewise, if we decided to change our base to unstable for some reason, the overlays will allow us to access stable packages via packages.stable. This effectively allows packages in Nix config to be pinned to whichever version is provided by the default in stable or unstable. As a practical example for this, let's consider our earlier look at the ghost host config where we declared what version of Mesa to use. If we want to switch to use whatever stable version of Nix packages is defined in the flake inputs, we can simply change unstable to stable. Or if we want to use whatever the base version of Nix packages was declared for the majority of the flake, we could remove this secondary attribute entirely and simply reference packages.mesa. This complexity adds convenience, but gets slightly confusing when we want to overlay stable or unstable. So let's go back to our overlays module. And when trying different pinned versions of Mesa, I wanted them to be only pinned if I was using unstable. So we'll add our overlays there. Note that here we're adding code to the overlays list within an overlay and need to define distinct arguments, namely unstable prev and unstable final to ensure that the correct packages are being referenced within the functions. As a little bonus, let's consider how we can make switching between pinned versions a little bit more convenient. By declaring the version and a set of various version specific hashes in a let block, we can easily change the version that is pinned by simply modifying version. Notice that if the version we declare doesn't correspond to a value in the hashes, SHA-256 will be declared as an empty string. Rebuilding will fail, but it will also provide us with the appropriate hash as follows. It's also worth noting that Nix store prefetch file is available on the command line for prefetching hashes prior to building, which can be a bit faster. And it's also worth noting that pinning packages to older versions can result in a package having to be built locally from source, which occurs automatically during rebuild, but it can take quite a bit of time depending on the package. And this occurs if there isn't a pre-built instance of that package available in the Nix cache any longer.
So this is what I did to pin a number of different Mesa versions and try and isolate the problem. It ended up being something else, but I'm glad I did this because I was able to share it with you and hopefully give you some ideas to how to make better use of overlays within NixConfig. Thanks for watching and thanks for your patience over the last few months. I'm really looking forward to getting more content out and special thank you to all my supporters. If you'd like to support this channel, please see the links in the description below. There's a number of different options and you can chat with me directly on my Discord server. See you there and remember, the way out is through.